As long as your baby is in your womb, there is a constant supply of oxygen from your placenta to your baby. Right. But what lots of women don't know is that things they do or don't do can have an impact on that oxygen supply mm -hmm. in both a positive and a negative way. Right. So in this video, we are first going to share with you eight ways to maintain a good oxygen supply and or to increase that oxygen supply to your baby. And then in the second part of this video, we are also going to tell you five things you should absolutely avoid if you want to make sure that your fetus receives enough oxygen. Yes, this is Natalie, a pregnancy and birth consultant and anthesium therapist. And that's Matthias, a researcher and science geek. And on this channel, we help mummies and their babies naturally and science-based. So let's make sure that your baby receives enough oxygen. Let us start by pointing out that under normal circumstances, there is absolutely no reason to worry about the oxygen supply to your baby. Right. However, it's important to note that your baby's oxygen supply is linked to your own blood circulation because it's your blood which carries the oxygen from your placenta to your baby. Right. And so if your own blood circulation is poor, then it could also affect the blood supply to your baby and thus your baby's oxygen supply. Mm -hmm. And we are going to see that things that you do or don't do will have an impact on that oxygen supply mostly because these things influence your own blood circulation. Right. With that said, let us now look at eight ways to maintain a good oxygen supply and or to increase the oxygen supply to the baby. In order for your blood circulation to work properly, your body needs a constant supply of water. And so if you're dehydrated, it can have a negative impact on your blood circulation. And as a result, it can have a negative impact on the oxygen supply from your placenta to your baby. Mm -hmm. Because of that, hydration is really the basis before you do anything else that we talk about in this video. During your pregnancy, your demand for iron almost doubles. That's because iron is used to produce the extra blood that your body needs during your pregnancy. Most importantly, that extra blood is required in order to supply oxygen to your baby. As a result, obviously, it is essential that your body receives enough iron during your pregnancy. Right. right? And if you want to know how much iron your body needs and also what foods contain iron, check out the video about the most important micronutrients that your baby needs during your pregnancy. Link can be found in the description below this video. Do not underestimate a good massage treatment. <laughs> a good massage treatment can activate blood circulation, not only locally where you apply the massage, but also throughout your body. Right. And that's because the strokes activate the very part of the nervous system, which is responsible for relaxation, which in turn causes the blood to circulate more freely. Right. And as you already know, a better blood circulation leads to a better oxygen supply to the baby. Yeah. So the next time you ask your partner for a nice back, massage, just tell him it's not for you, it's for the baby. Okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We know it sounds super trivial. However, a walk in the nature is a very simple way of increasing the amount of oxygen that your body brings in. Yeah. And that's not only because of the fresh air which you are exposed to, but also because walking is a form of exercising which benefits your circulation. Mm -hmm. And obviously both a better oxygenation as well as a better blood circulation will increase the oxygen supply to your baby. Talking about exercising, obviously walking is not the only form of exercising, right? Workouts in general are a great way to maintain a good blood circulation in your body mm -hmm. and thus to maintain a good exchange of blood and oxygen between you and your baby. Right. That said, workouts for your legs during your pregnancy, such as squats, can be particularly helpful here because your legs have to carry all the extra weight from your pregnancy, right? Therefore, we can often see that the legs are most affected from issues of blood circulation, for example, because of edema, swollen legs, etc. Yes, and if you want to know five simple exercises for your pregnancy to improve your blood circulation, particularly in your legs, and to help you prepare for labor and birth, then check out the video which you can find in the description below this video. Personally, 
finally, we are big fans of yoga because there are just tons of scientific studies which show that yoga comes with so many benefits for both the mother and the baby. Yeah. Among others, it was shown that yoga can increase the blood flow not only in terms of your own blood circulation, but also in terms of that exchange of blood between your baby and your placenta. Yeah. So definitely try yoga if you're looking for ways to increase the oxygen supply to the baby. Yes, and if you are a follower of our channel, then you probably know that we are big fans of the cat cow pose <laughs> because we demonstrate how to do it in at least three videos on our <laughs> channel. One of those videos pops up now, but if it does not pop up, you can also find it in the description below this video. Almost every relaxation technique includes some form of deep breathing. And that's because, like massage treatments, deep breathing techniques can activate the very part of the nervous system which is responsible for relaxation. Right. In other words, deep breathing techniques can help you relax, slow down your heart rate and improve your blood circulation in general. Therefore, we recommend taking a moment every now and then throughout the day in which all you do is focus on your breathing. Yeah. And just that you know, this also works when you are in labor. Okay, this is our favorite way of increasing the <laughs> oxygen supply to the baby. Eat dark chocolate. Scientific studies have found that dark chocolate helps the body produce nitric oxide. Right. And nitric oxide supports the entire circulatory system. In other words, it can improve blood circulation mm -hmm. by helping your body dilate and constrict blood vessels. Right. It can even help lower blood pressure, right? Yes. That said, we don't want to encourage you to eat tons of chocolate, right? Particularly not if you suffer from diabetes or gestational diabetes. Yeah. But some 30 grams of dark chocolate per day did the trick in scientific studies. All right, I'm going to go for 100 grams per day then, <laughs> you know, just to make sure that my body has the best possible support in terms of blood circulation, right? <laughs> Anyways, so those were the eight most important ways to maintain a good oxygen supply mm -hmm. or to increase the oxygen supply to your baby. Right. And now let's talk about five things you should avoid during your pregnancy in order to make sure that your baby receives enough oxygen. We don't need to tell it the obvious, because you know yourself that smoking during pregnancy is bad for your baby, right? Yeah. We just want to let you know that smoking can have many different kinds of adverse effects for the baby. Yes, most importantly, some scientists found that smoking could impair that exchange of oxygen between the placenta and your baby. Mm -hmm. So please stay away from smoking when you are right. pregnant. Scientific studies have found that placentas from obese women are heavier and thicker. Mm -hmm. And such placentas are often less able to efficiently provide nutrients and oxygen to the baby. Right. As a result, thick and heavy placentas are often associated with adverse effects mm -hmm. such as fetal growth restriction or low pH value of the umbilical artery and many more things, right? Right. Most importantly though, obesity could affect the fetal oxygenation, which is why excessive weight gain during a pregnancy is not a good idea when it comes to the well-being of the baby. Most of the things that apply to placentas from obese women also apply to placentas from women who suffer from gestational diabetes. Yeah. Of course, it's not an easy task to avoid gestational diabetes. However, it is definitely possible to make it at least less likely, for example, by regular exercise, by maintaining a healthy weight before and during your pregnancy and by a healthy diet including vitamin D. Yes, that said, we clearly want to point out that we personally know many women who did all those things mm. and still ended up having gestational diabetes, yeah. right? So as Natalie said, gestational diabetes is a tricky one. It was shown in many scientific studies that when a woman is under a lot of stress and anxiety, and if that anxiety is being reduced, then it can improve the blood flow to the uterus. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is important that you find ways to manage stress and anxiety. This could be relaxation techniques, 
exercises, but also alternative medicine, like for example, acupuncture. Mm -hmm. So again, if you want to know the five best exercises to prepare your body for labor and birth during your pregnancy, check out the video that pops up now. You can also find it in the description below this video. When you lie on your back, you risk that the weight of both your baby and your uterus presses against your vena cava. This is basically a very large vein which carries deoxygenated blood back to your heart, which is a very important part of the whole circulation process. Yes. And so if the weight of your baby presses against that vein, it could have a negative impact on the circulation, which in turn could reduce the oxygen supply to your baby. Yes, that said, please note that most doctors agree that it is okay to lie on your back if your back is in an inclined position of at least 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. However, a better way to lie in bed, particularly when you sleep, is a sideline position. In fact, the best sleeping position is the one which we explain in our video, best sleeping position to turn a breech baby, which should pop up now. If it does not pop up, you can also find the link in the description below this video. Right, so we hope that you now understand how your baby receives oxygen and how that oxygen supply can be affected by many things you do or don't do. Yes, but we want to point out again that under normal circumstances, your baby's oxygen supply is not an issue, right? So don't worry too much about it. Mm -hmm. Just recall every now and then what we have explained in this video and most importantly, apply it. Right, we really hope that you have found this video helpful. If you did, we would be super grateful if you could leave us a like or even a comment in the comment section below. Yes, and for more useful tips and tools on pregnancy and baby related topics, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the bell.